Welcome to Lesson 1.7's Math Moment. Today students learned how to add fractions with unlike denominators, which is trickier than adding fractions that have the same denominator. I'm going to show you two different strategies for completing these problems. Strategy 1 is going to be in blue marker and strategy 2 will be in red. Let's start with strategy 1. The first example is 5 eighths plus 7 tenths. These denominators are not the same, so one strategy is to multiply the denominators by each other in order to make them the same. So, 5 eighths plus 7 tenths. I can take 8 times 10 and 10 times 8 to come up with the same number on the denominator. So anything I do to the bottom of a fraction, I always have to do to the top. So if I'm going to take 8 times 10, then I have to take 5 times 10. If I'm going to take 10 times 8, then I have to take 7 times 8. So now I'm actually creating a different looking uh, a couple of different looking fractions, but they're still equivalent to the original fractions. So 5 times 10 is 50. 8 times 10 is 80. 7 times 8 is 56, 10 times 8 is 80. Now, this strategy does have us working with numbers that are a bit larger, but it is one strategy that students can use. I've now made my denominators the same, so once I make them the same, they stay the same when I'm adding or subtracting. And then I just get to add my numerators, or the tops. 50 plus 56 is 106. Now, this fraction should look funny to you because it's improper. In, less, um, in a previous lesson, we learned how to change improper fractions to make them proper by dividing the top number by the bottom number. So in this case, 106 divided by 80. I know that 80 cannot go into 1 and 80 cannot go into 10, but it can go into 106 one time. 1 times 80 is 80. And then I just subtract. 6 minus 0. I cannot take 0 minus 8, so I borrow the 1. 10 minus 8 is 2. There's nothing left to bring down, so 26 is what I have left over. It becomes my numerator of my remainder, and 80 becomes my denominator for a final answer of 1 and 26 80ths. Another way to do this exact same problem is by working with smaller numbers. So I'm again going to take 5 eighths plus 7 tenths. Instead of multiplying the denominators by each other like I did in strategy 1, this time I'm going to look for their least common multiple. A multiple that they have in common that I could change them both into to make them the same. To do that, I'm going to count by eights. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. I usually count out about six factors to help me find the least common multiple. Then I count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I then look for the number that they have in common that is the smallest. So as I look across, I see that they both have 40 in common. Now I know that I can make both denominators equal to 40, and that, then I can make them the same. So I think 8 times what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gets me 40. Anything I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. And 10 times 4 gives me 40. Anything I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So I now, again, I'm going to make two fractions that look a little bit different, but are still the same. 5 times 5 is 25. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 7 times 4 is 28, 10 times 4 is 40. Now that I've made my denominators the same, they get to stay the same at 40, and then I just add my tops. 25 plus 28 is 53. Now again, this should look funny to you because it's an improper fraction. The top is bigger than the bottom. To solve that, I'm going to take the top number and divide it by the bottom number. 40 cannot go into 5, but it can go into 53 one time. 1 times 40 is 40. 
I subtract. 3 minus 0 is 3. 5 minus 4 is 1. There's nothing left to bring down, so 13 becomes the numerator, and 40 is the denominator for a final answer of 1 and 13 fortieths. Now, you might be looking at my blue answer and my red answer and thinking, but those are not the same. And you're right, they're not. They are equivalent fractions, even though they look different. If I took 13 times 2, I would get 26. 40 times 2, I would get 80. So these answers are the same. The strategies um, are different because this one, you're working with larger numbers. And in this strategy, you're probably going to have to reduce your answer down for your teacher to really like your answer. And with this strategy, you already have the simplest answer, the smallest form that it can go. So my favorite strategy is strategy two because you don't have to do the extra work like in strategy one when you would have to take this answer and reduce it later on. So now we're going to move down to the other example, which, which is just a word problem. It says a recipe calls for three-fourths cup of white sugar and one-third cup of brown sugar. How much sugar is there all together? So I've got three-fourths and one-third. The words all together tell me to put them together or to add. So I'm going to show you strategy one, which is to take three-fourths plus one-third and just to multiply the denominators by each other. So I'm going to take four times three and three times four. Anything I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So I'm going to take 3 times 3. Anything I, must, I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. So I'm going to take 1 times 4. Now again, I'm going to get different looking fractions, but they'll be equivalent. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. The denominators are now the same, so they get to stay the same. And 9 plus 4 is 13. This fraction should look funny. The top is bigger than the bottom, so I have to divide to make it proper. 13 divided by 12. 12 cannot go into 1, but it does go into 13 one time. And when I subtract, I'm just left over with 1. My um, bottom, whatever I'm left over with, goes at the new, is the new numerator. 12 is the denominator for an answer of 1 and 1 12. Now, for this problem, strategy 2 is going to be very similar, but I'm going to show it to you as well. Because when I take 3 fourths plus 1 third with strategy 2, I'm going to count by fours and list out my multiples. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And then I'm going to count by threes. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. I'm going to look for the number that they have in common, which it just so happens in this case, the smallest number that they have in common is 12. So then I would follow the same steps as strategy one to solve my problem. Thank you for listening and um, if you have any questions about how to solve fractions with unlike denominators, make sure to check with your teacher.